Back at it, Jimbo. Back in the saddle. <laughs> Welcome to Steady at the Wheel. Oh, you're taking mm-hmm. some liberties without <laughs> Luke here. Man, we've been we've been laying it down. We continue on here. Uh, new day. It's actually pretty late. We're kind of doing some midnight oil type stuff. We're burning the midnight oil. I've we we Luke and I have learned you have to just take these when you can, because you never know when. In Luke's case, like you're gonna get the twin bomb. Yeah. Where it's like, all of a sudden, it's seven days of no sleep. <laughs> I think it's, it's been a little rough the last few days over there. Uh, you never know when you're going to get the twin bomb. You never know when you're going to decide to f- just fly back down to Texas. I know, man. I've got a narrow window that we can try I to know. squeeze these in I've on. I've gotten too used to you being around. It just it brings back all the just the good old, just more and more. In fact, today, you guys, we had something different planned for this episode to talk about. And we were just sitting here at the table, and I was like, oh, remember that time? And it all of a sudden morphed into this whole new now we have an episode we're going to do that was not planned that has to be done yeah, i think it'll be fun for people to hear about for your history and kind of <laughs> where you came from oh you guys we're going to talk today in a little bit about auctioneering school you're basically going to get to hear my how i went from a five five ten ten fifteen fifteen because that's you know when you first start auctioneering that's kind of your flow yes it is to the morph down you ready jim yeah, hey, but get thirty pound, but I get thirty pound, but I'm forty down, get a bit of bit of money, but I'm forty, but pound, but I'm forty pound, but I get fifty dollar, but now, but I'm money, but I'm there to the bit fifty five. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, just a beautiful, beautiful <laughs> transition. What, and nothing sounds better than when you get to do it in the mic with the headphones on. It's like, ooh, hey, I can listen to myself all day long. Yeah, when we're not pressing record, Jackson's doing that into the mic constantly. <laughs> so I think he really just was trying to find an excuse to get to that just recorded be able to do it. <laughs> Oh, you guys just, uh, and we'll get into it in a little bit, but actually before we get started on the whole auction, because Weston actually also has a auctioneering history yourself, as uh, I think we mentioned it just briefly in a in a different recording, where oh, yeah. you were the youngest. Went to auction school, sold cattle for a, a while there. You did? Yeah. Aged, like, whatever, eighth grade summer? Was it eighth grade summer? When it? I first started, yeah. Yeah. And you actually sold cattle across the auction block. Yeah, for... Uh, yeah, but after school, yeah, we'll probably get into it. But how yeah. would you like to be the producer that comes in? He's like, "Oh man, I hope these cows still good." You sit down, look across the way, and there's old Stony over there, eighth grade summer. <laughs> I, and I can't remember what your chant was like. Your early chant. It's just. I'm sure it was just golden. I'm sure it was. There's a picture of us. In fact, I wish I had that. Yeah, but maybe have Matt it's put that up somewhere. there. It's you and I on the block, just as a couple of babies. I'll have to find that for find sure and send it over to yeah, him so he can Matt. pop it up. Cause, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Little boys. <laughs> and I think Uncle Lyle at the time had actually had his mustache shaved off, so he even looked extremely just you know different because he's yeah. one of them life mustache for life oh, yeah. guys. Powerful mustache. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And he didn't have it in that picture, so it's baby me, baby you, and baby Lyle. All up there in the summertime with be- <laughs> like these nice little Montana summer tans. <laughs> Pretty good. You guys, I want to give you a trucker tip. I'm going to give you a trucker tip. Got to love those, right? Uh, most of these tips come because they are based off of videos that I've seen. You know, they come across the old social waves. And it's usually like a bad situation. And you're like, huh, what can be learned from this? Well, this particular video uh, brought back some memories because... I think I've been in this situation. I don't think I know that I've been in this situation a few times. And it is the situation where someone uh, orders a truck and you're to make a delivery. In my case, it's typically cattle. Sometimes those toilets that we haul into the mountains. Uh, you know, I think I've shared a few of those stories. Why do you say mountains like that? Well, like what? Mountains. Mountains. It, you really hit that T. Well, look at me. Should I say it like mountains? I just say, say, how do you say it? Mountains? mountains? No, I don't. No, just mountains. Like a normal. Just do it like a normal guy. Like mountains. I'm going to the mountains. Like that. What is wrong with that? No, go ahead. I don't want to derail your thing. No, how do you say it? Mountains. Mountains. There you go. Mountains. So you don't do the T. You just go mount mountains. The T makes me feel uncomfortable when you hit. When you hit that, it makes me feel uncomfortable. You know why I do it? You remember the the Disney movie Mulan? 
The soldier from the mountains. Yes, yeah. that's the line. That's why, I do it. <laughs> the soldier from the mountains. See, and that's kind of my point. That's very appropriate in an animated Disney movie. Disney movie. <laughs> Not not as cool on the trucker I podcast. I, you know, I traveled. I, so here's my thing: is I traveled the country, and people are like Montana, Yellowstone. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And so they they already hold me in this high and mighty regard. Okay. So I say mountain. Okay. So it, whether you're hauling cattle or hauling toilets in the mountains, in the mountains. Okay. Oh, man. Sorry, okay. I didn't mean to derail you. <laughs> Glad you brought it up. Oh, uh, uh, whether I'm hauling cattle or hauling toilet in the mountains. The, sorry, the mountains, then you find yourself in situations that were not accurately represented to you in the description of the job. Meaning they're like, yeah, we're, you know, we're just a couple miles. In fact, it just happened a couple weeks ago. Yeah, we're just like a mile out of town. Well, they don't mention that it's a mile of pure ice road, vertical cliff climb. I'm like, oh, yeah, you, you forgot to mention that it's just a total death road. And there's a very small chance that I will make it in without destroying a piece of my equipment you know yeah i saw so i see this video and it's of this it, you could tell it was a truck that's a over the road truck it's not a truck that was meant to be off of the pavement it's more of a show dog yes show dog but, but uh, yeah yeah basically that so this truck is it's you can see that it's carrying like a like a barn dominium or something or some kind of a shop like a pre a pre-manufactured building that's all in pieces on his flatbed modular type deal and yeah. he's and he turns in he's going up some red mud road and he doesn't he just like cranks it super sharp comes up the hill and like he's just buried within i mean his trailer's buried off the highway and he's just like swamped and then you know and this is the video was actually posted by the people building the building this wasn't like a trucker web page thing um so the people building this were like oh we overcame some adversity, but we got him to the top. And then the next cut goes to like some heavy equipment with chains, just like just ripping the snot out of the front of his truck. And the whole thing's doing the. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh. And this poor guy, probably because he's used to life on the highway with that truck, didn't know any better. But my tip to you is when you, if you get to these places, <clears throat> You take the time to just stop first, get out, walk up the drive if you need to a ways, meet with the customer and say, can we jump in your pickup and drive up the road? Because I don't know that I'm going to make it in. And of course, their first response usually is, well, you you have to. And you're like, if I can't make it in, no, I don't don't have to. Like, I'm not going to let you drag my, you know, hundred and some thousand dollar semi and trailer up this goat trail to unload a load that paid me $2.97 a mile or whatever. You're like, mm-mm. So uh, just just word of the wise, do a little, uh, what's that word in law? Do, I'd, I'd just say a little due diligence due there. Due diligence. And uh, yeah, just check it out. And it, you're not, it's not like a mean thing. You just be, you can be respectful. You don't have to come be like, what are you guys, what in tarnation you thought I would? You can be cool about it and professional and just be like, you know, I, I can't get up there. So, and in this case... Obviously, they could have just brought the tractor down the hill, and it would have taken a while to unload, but get one telehandler load at a time and go take it up and drop it. And Yeah, it would have been yeah, probably 10 trips back and forth for whoever the telehandler operator was, but your truck's going to still be in alignment because when you start hooking chains on, the, on that front axle, mm, you lose your alignment, and you're going to go spend three, or $400 at an alignment shop to get squared up again, you know? That's a great tip. And again, your trucks, your lifeblood. It's yeah. That's what's bringing mm-hmm. in the money for you. I yeah. mean, you got to you got to take care of it. Yeah, like respect it. But how often do you uh you see situations <clears throat> see situations other guys are in that where they get in a tight spot and you think, "Oh, man, if you would, you know, and especially if they're in rural areas especially where you think, "Man, if you could have just pulled to the shoulder and just jumped out and just looked or if you would have just stopped when you when you got tight on that corner, yeah. and if you would have just said, "Oh, I might be close to the edge. Let me jump out and see how close I am," yep. then you could back out of it. Yep. So many times. So kind of in that same vein, where hundred percent. If you just take a breath, say, "All right, hang on. I don't need to go down this goat trail without ch- just seeing the lay of the land yep. first. Doing, yep. Check it out because there's always that little point of no return where you're like, "Yeah," and I've been in it. I've done it. I've been there. Yeah. You've been there. 
<laughs> yep. <laughs> Where you just go, why did why didn't I just think? Why didn't I always just do this? I sit there and go like this in my truck. And yep. Like, why didn't I just think? Just think. That's a Luke move too, by yeah. the way, isn't oh, it? Oh yeah, Luke's the he's the founder of the forehead. <clears throat> yeah. So that's a good anyway, tip. little word to the wise: don't be afraid to uh, to say no. And uh, you know, with with the cattle deal, usually you're. You, you can't really drop them out on the road, but but I have had one time. Actually, it was a couple of weeks ago where I said I, they wanted me to go over, and I was like, nope, bring your chute down here because I'm not going up there on the ice and snow, yeah, with a load of cattle on it. I'm just not going to do it. Yeah, so it, they ended up having to trail them up the road a ways. Yeah, earlier, early in a person's career, you might feel a little less confident to to say, hey, I'm not going up there. But really, you know, you might kind of feel like I got to. This is what I do, I guess. This is right. I just got to do it all. Like I'll lose the work if I don't yeah. do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But no load is worth tearing your stuff up. I mean, there might be a, a load here and there that's worth tearing your equipment up over, but they're, <laughs> they're very rare. few. Yeah. yeah. Few and far between. I had something too that I was going to mention when you say you saw something come across your socials. I had something come across mine, which is something that you and Luke had talked about on the podcast. Just real quick. Uh -huh. Just say that I saw the exact situation where... Uh, a guy was just in a, a day cab semi pulling like a dry van in bad weather, icy, and had his cruise control on, went across a bridge, and just with his cruise control on, and and you had laid this situation out, but I was like, oh, I wonder what that'd look like. Saw an exact video of it, fished, or, you know, uh, started jackknife just a hair as he's going across the bridge, then hits dry pavement and just... Whoosh, just launched him. Launches him. In the, <laughs> so, you know, he was going straight and then just jackknifes a hair and then hits dry pavement and just launches into the borrow pit. Oh. But it was exactly what, what you had that, described. Yeah. It was crazy because that is that is just what Jackson Luke Dude, was talking and about. And the worst part of those is that those bridge crossings are fast. Yeah. Just enough time, basically, think of it like a slingshot, just enough time to really pull that rubber band all the way back because yeah. your wheels will wrap up to like 80, 90 miles an hour. Mm. And then when you hit that pavement, it's like letting go of the slingshot. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you really go because your wheels are, you know, they're, yeah. they're cruising. So uh, that's funny you saw that. I also had something I wanted to run by you that I thought might be a good little quiz just to kind of see, oh, like, see how sharp you are in your trucker cb pop lingo. quiz oh this could go bad for me okay so i'm gonna <clears throat> i'm gonna ask you a question you're gonna see if you can give the the definition i'll give you the trucker slang okay this is like old school stuff yeah and you Maybe. know this is from kind of a list i found on okay some of it so you know just kind of setting the groundwork for people okay right we'll on. see how i do okay lay it on me okay and easy on me, okay just to kind of get everyone in the mode okay a bear would be law enforcement right in the in the trucker world usually DOT. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to actually say bear, law enforcement, full grown bear, DOT. Full grown, that's right. Even another step. Full grown bear. That a baby. But most people anymore, it's like, they, they'll say, they'll be like, there's a bear. And you're like, what do you what do you mean? Like a highway patrol? Like who cares? I don't speed. Yeah. I drive slow. Or is it a DOT? I don't care about highway patrol. <laughs> is it a DOT? Uh, so, so full grown is yeah. DOT. There you go. Full, full so grown so the opposite of a, of a uh, full grown bear so I like this one, a town clown. Oh, that's actually new for me, a what town is, clown. Can you guess what that is? That would be a city cop. Yeah, just a city cop. Isn't that a good and one? And to you city cops out there listening, you of course, we love you. <laughs> hey, I'm a lawyer that has to sit through every <laughs> lawyer joke. So Yeah, that's true. The, the that's cop true. You, have, you could care it. less. Huh? Yeah, I don't have much sympathy. <laughs> no sympathies. How about, uh, and then chicken coop? Would be the scale. Way station, where they weigh your trucks. Okay, I like this. How about motion lotion? Oh, uh, I, you. How did that get in here? Cause I don't. Ooh, it's just simpler than you're thinking. Uh, an oil change? No, just diesel fuel. <laughs> motion, go get some motion lotion. Oh man, I don't think if I was out on the road and I was like, got on the scene and was like, boy, I need some motion lotion. <laughs> I don't. I don't think that someone's gonna get on and say, well, there's good diesel at the Flying J <laughs> at Exit 421. I don't think that's the direction. Okay, this list might be a little suspect. Okay, how about a wiggle wagon? <laughs> okay. Some of these are just... I'm sorry. A wiggle, a wiggle wagon is a set of doubles or triples. Yes, sir. Yeah. Because you get those extra trailers back there and they just kind of get whipped around. <laughs> okay. 
uh, oh. this is just kind of highway related as you're on the road stuff. So you see an organ donor. An or, uh, fatality? It's a motorcyclist without a helmet. Oh, hey, that's a good one. I like that. Okay. I've heard, I heard this the other day too, and I never heard, most of these I'd kind of heard, um, a gator or gator guts. Oh, yeah, a blown tire. Yeah. You, yeah. I mean, I, I never hear anyone there, say that. But. Some people, yeah, a lot of guys call them gators. Um, oh, there's another, there's another term for them I can't think of. But yeah, when uh, someone's running a recap tire and it blows, and sometimes they're night and they just leave one just solid piece of rubber on the ground. Sometimes they just disaster pieces all over. Right. I ran one over once coming around a corner at night on 212. No, no service, no nothing. Ripped my fuel line off from the bottom of my tank. Dumped like 100 gallons of diesel out on the highway. Are before you serious? I, before I could crawl out and get it plugged with a glove. Jeez. And I spent the night there. Huh, so the Between gator. Busby and Lame Deer. You call that a gator bite when it rips your I, fuel line I out. was bitten. It chomped. Jeez. <laughs> Almost the death roll. Isn't that it, yeah, they with the grab and they rather roll you. Okay, how about a, a driving award? Uh, I, mm, mm. It's kind of lame. Speeding ticket. Oh. <laughs> and then how about, we'll just end here. A Kojak with a Kodak? Kojak with a tourist. That sounds like that'd be better. It says a police officer with a radar gun. Oh, okay. Yeah. Again, I'm not sure how much you'll use a lot of those. And in, admittedly, I kind of, you know, I, I didn't really get to grow up in the age of just crazy CB lingo. Rooster and yeah. Billy Jack were pretty hot and heavy back and forth when they'd travel, you know, just talking to each other. But as far as the, like, the official, yeah. a lot of people out there listening, I know we have some old timers. Some old wizards out there that that have a whole list of some really prime some prime stuff. Yeah. Good. Well, I kind of pass, maybe probably pass. I, th- I think you passed. Didn't we're not. Yeah, we're just gonna say pass fail. Okay, and you pass. Okay, pass fail. <laughs> okay, good. Oh man. Th- well, thanks, Jim. I like that. That was good. So uh, let's uh, let's get into this auctioneering thing because it actually has played a huge part and it has a you may not seem like it as we're going through these stories that we're going to tell you but the auctioneering plays a huge and very integral part in my livestock trucking career in fact i would probably give it about a if i had to attribute if i had to attribute there we go i'm working on it if i had to attribute you know some percentages to this to the success of my business I'd probably give it a solid 75% comes from auctioneering yeah. that led to so much of this. So, all right. So back in the day. Well, and, and just real quick too, we got talking, we were before this, you know, a little behind the scenes here. <laughs> before we started the podcast, you know, we're talking about what are we going to talk about? Oh, we'll, we'll kind of talk about where you were at in your, uh, in your trucking career at, you know, at X point in time, at this certain point in time. And we were thinking, you know, what else was going on? We were, you know... And ep- I don't know how many episodes ago when this comes out, but when we talked about us hauling those crazy cattle up out of Denton, and I'm just thinking, Jackson was married like with a kid at that point. Mm-hmm. But you know, how did you keep all this afloat? Right, because we weren't. I mean, we were trucking, but it wasn't providing a living. Yeah, at that all. Was, yeah. not even close. No, we yeah. just barely kind of dipping your toe in the water. Yeah, but that's because really your main source at this time and for a while after. Was the auctioneering. Was still auctioneering. Livestock yeah. auctioneering. So we'll back up and give you a reminder. About the time I was 21 years old, my uncle uh, here in Lewistown owned the sale barn. He had purchased it some years before, and he he hit me up, and he's like, I, I'm kind of auctioneering by myself, and I always need good help, and you know, your folks are out there on the ranch and they've, they've got a lot of work. That place is, you know, a, a work in progress. <laughs> you remember how bad it was when, sure we, first, when yeah. we first arrived? And they got tons of work to do. I got tons of work to do. I don't know what you're thinking of doing, but if you want to become an auctioneer, I would love to show you the ways. So pr- honestly, prior to that, I had helped uh, Uncle Lyle before with, you know, farm auctions and stuff growing up where you... You know, you'd run tickets back and forth to the office from the auction block, you know, to the office and, you know, spotting bids and just trying to kind of help out. Mm-hmm. Had had grown up doing that a few times a year for him. Because he, he would do farm equipment sales and, and yeah, things like that yeah, as well. He, he, was a, he was a full-time auctioneer, livestock auctioneer. So he'd sell like like five, four to five livestock sales a week. And then on some of these weekends, they'd do farm auctions kind of as needed yeah. as another little side bit. And... Uh, 
but never crossed my mind to become an auctioneer. Like a lot of people, when they're asked, you know, what, how did you become an auctioneer? Like it's been my life dream since I was a boy. I heard old grandpa auctioneer and my dad and now me. It's like, no, just never thought of it. Just had somebody mention it to me one day and I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> is, you know what I mean? Yeah, quick sidebar. That is exactly me uh, with law, you know, being a lawyer. <laughs> so many people graduate law school and is it share, kind of share a these posts and they're like, oh, you know, following my family's footsteps or like, you know, I was the little girl in third grade who wrote, <laughs> I'm going to be a lawyer when I grow up and here I am. And I'm like... <laughs> I don't know, I kind of finished undergrad, didn't really know what to do, and thought, I don't know, I guess I'll go to law school, <laughs> you know, so kind of say, similar. Uh, that's true, it's very similar. So, <laughs> so we, uh, we decide, let's do it, let's auctioneer. Uh, Lyle was like, just come in, I, you know, I, I'm happy to just kind of teach you the ways, teach you, basically when you're learning to auctioneer, you're learning how to count. That's all it is. You're just counting. Yeah. It's learning how to count in a rhythm, in a beat. Yeah. So it's like a mix between rapping and counting numbers, yeah. <laughs> right? Like you got to just be able to say things in, within a rhythm. Yeah. But uh, dad was very adamant. Old Rooster was like, I really, really want you to go to a school just because when you go to the school, it's focused. You're there. That's all you do. When you leave the school, you have a solid foundation. Yes. You could just learn off the fly from Lyle, but you're not going to be nearly as focused, which, you know, very understandable. Yeah. He wanted, he wanted to get the real college experience. Yeah. Yeah. He probably realized that this was the best thing I was ever going to be able to do <laughs> college-wise. <laughs> I hate you guys. I hate it. I hated school. Everything about it. Just I never some, – some kids, they just get it, and it clicks, and they can do the schoolwork, and, and fl- it was just like nothing – Everything was just a fight to like get through every class, and it just it never because just you're just because you're bored, not because <laughs> you were dumb. Yeah, but, yeah, I just you know I just didn't apply myself to it, yeah. you know, because I didn't have interest in it. Yeah, in this you know and whatever. So anyway, so when this starts popping up, I'm like, hey, this is this is good. Um, I don't it just never quite felt right to go enroll in college. So I thought, let's let's roll with this and let's see, because you can always go to school. You know, you can always go to it doesn't matter what age you are, you can go enroll in college. <clears throat> so I thought, let's give this a try. Plus, I loved, you know, come home to the ranch, and I loved ranching and lo- the trucking we were doing. So I always loved, you know, rolling with Rooster. So the auctioneering was a nice little fit in. Yeah, with, it was just like, that. yeah, let's do it. We're here, and let's roll. So turns out there's like, this is, I sh- I'm not going to say a number. Well, just to give you an idea, there's like half a dozen auction schools in the United States. Roughly, there's yeah. probably some, you know, some online courses and things, but like actual like established, been around for a long time auction schools. Um, at the time that we went, there was basically like three. I think. I think you're there right. Were like, if you're gonna go to an auction school, you go to you know. I think it was the Western College of Auctioneering here in Montana, which was I didn't realize was just down the road here in Billings, Montana. I think there was a worldwide. Yeah, it's uh, in Nebraska, or uh, Iowa. It's yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, she didn't say. <laughs> yeah, but it's out there yeah. somewhere. And there was one other one that it, it eludes me. But but the best of them, for sure. Oh, yeah. Western, Hands down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Montana, they produce the best of everything. But actually, no lie, It's a, it was a really good. It was. It was and it, well, it still is. And it's probably better, mm-hmm. a lot better now. Yeah. Yeah, Nick Bennett bought it here several years ago, and he's just taken it another notch up. Yeah, he's a stud. Yeah. Uh, Actually, I end up now. I'm an instructor. Oh, that's there. Right. I can't forget that you're an instructor. <laughs> we need to make. Yeah, we'll we'll we'll, we'll have to razz about that. But yeah, it's people are like, so what do you, what do you do? I'm like, well, I'm a trucker and I'm a college professor. They're like, what? I'm like, yeah, I instruct at the Western College of Auctioneering. Yeah, you still do because <laughs> you're an alumni, alumnus. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 yeah. Yep. So, anyway, uh, so I'm I'm all gung ho. We're gonna do this, and uh, Dad has this idea that. You know what? If you're gonna do it, Weston might as well learn to do it too, because you'd proven yourself very capable here on the ranch. And you know, Rooster did a little auctioneering back in the day when Grandpa, you know, owned the auction. And Rooster's kind of always, oh, yeah. you know, he'd always kind of mess around with us growing up. He had like he was a, like kind of a party trick. Hoping you shoot and give her the boot and what am I bet on our boys? <laughs> Honestly, I don't really remember anything about how or why or discussions or anything about me going to auction school, other than like you saying. <laughs> Hey, you need to pack for a couple of weeks. We're going to auction We're school going tomorrow. We're going to auction school. Here we go. It's like the next day, and I'm just like, oh, yeah, no, that checks out. Yeah, I get. I am definitely 
That's what I'm doing. So we line it up. Uh, they were very reluctant, the the owners of the school, because Weston was eighth grade. And they're like, you know, normally, I think it was 16 years old they'd like you to be, to go, uh, minimum. And they were like, oh, and you were a couple, you know, a few years off of that. And so Rooster somehow did a little silver tongue, sweet talking, and they decided to let Weston in. So we jumped in our 1995 Ford Escort. <laughs> yes, we did Tucson Bronze. <laughs> Tucson Bronze. Clean one owner. And we uh, we jumped in and we headed her down to Billings. Now auction school, you guys, is is uh, it takes place at a it's like a it's it's at a hotel convention center, like now in in Bozeman, right? Yeah, where they have it's at a nice hotel. Yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. it's a really it's good a nice spot. place. Back back then, this was kind of the tail end uh, of the the previous ownership. And they had a pretty good deal worked out with a hotel in Billings, some of you may or may not know, called the War Bonnet Inn. And it, it in its heyday in the 70s and 80s, was Billings was really booming. Downtown was really safe and clean and uh, awesome. But in, as, as has happened in so many American cities, the good old days of then kind of passed by. But yet the war bonnet remained, and they must have been giving them a heck of a deal because they held the auction school there. And I remember on day one, orientation, they specifically told us, no going out. Those of you that like to, this was kind of before like jogging and stuff was real popular and like exercising. They're like, don't. Sorry. If you like to do it, you're just going to have to take two weeks off. It's not safe. It's not a good neighborhood. (laughs) Stay here in the hotel. Don't go far. Do you remember any other little takeaways from that? Oh, just all that stuff you're talking <laughs> yeah, about? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I just remember feeling like uh, we're kind of in a war zone or something out there. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I didn't know Billings at all. No, I, know, I, did I, I know it very well but, now. But back Yeah, then. but I knew enough to know at that point we must be in the worst spot <laughs> <laughs> in the whole city. Yep. Yeah. But the school itself, great. You know, oh, like fantastic. The, the, yeah. the curriculum and the, and the coursework. So... Um, very uncomfortable day one, Stony. What? Uh, oh, <laughs> let me just jump in here. Okay. <clears throat> so I don't know if they still have it, but the logo for the Western College of Auctioneering was a rake. That was like the mascot. That was thing. like the yeah. mascot. Didn't make any sense. Yeah, that was the one strange part. I don't know if Nick has carried that on or not. He, he has carried the rake over. Okay, and the reason that's the mascot is the first day everyone gets there, you don't know a thing about auctioneering. No, you're there to, you're there to learn how to yeah. auction it. And so what they like to do is have everyone in the class come up and you auction off this rake, just a, yeah. just a big steel rake. Yeah, like a, like a rock rake. Yeah, just, mm-hmm. yeah, right, just a big rock rake. And so you get up and everyone one by one goes through. And it's just, it's just a good thing to, to kind of get it out. And it's terrifying. Per- terrifying, but good for the group to kind of say, hey, we None all, of us know what we're doing. We all. We're all going to learn. And then at the end, when the everything's completed, you all go back through and you sell that same rake. Two weeks later. And you realize you still suck, but not quite as <laughs> not bad. Not quite as bad. <laughs> you you kind of know how to do it a little bit. <laughs> but so that first terrifying day, everyone gets up one by one. And we're, and we're all kind of the same, right? We, and it's, it's kind of like this. Oh, hi, I'm Bob Jenkins from Maidel, Oklahoma. Two, five, five, <laughs> ten, <laughs> out ten. <laughs> Sold. And we still have this on. And they record it. They record it. Recording. We just found our recordings. You did. You sent it to oh, me yeah. like a couple oh. months ago. <laughs> but so, so like I get up and I'm kind of just like everyone else. Just like, oh, hi, I'm Weston Allen from Lewistown, Montana. Who wants a good rake? Ten uh, dollars? Twenty dollars? It was like every bit was a question. Yeah, twenty-five dollars, <laughs> and just no rhyme or reason. Okay, sold twenty twenty dollars, and just very bare bones, except for one man. Whoa. There was one guy in this whole class that said, "Screw all that." <laughs> I know what I'm doing. My uncle's an auctioneer, and I've heard him sell, and I think I can sell this thing. And that man was Jackson Allen. Thank you. So everyone is just doing the same thing. Hey, we all don't know what we're doing. Jackson gets up there. Can I kind of imitate it? (laughs) Yes. And Jackson gets up there. He had just spent two years on a church mission in just the heart of the Ozarks. (laughs) 
and had picked up and just I picked up a southern just this little <laughs> southern accent kind thing. of a weird little southern I, and, and i tried to carry it on like it was, it was a little badge of honor like because i spent two years out here i'm gonna try to keep the language of the people you yeah know? so and it really came out here because he gets up and you know i had just showed you what mine was like and jackson gets up and he goes my name is jackson allen <laughs> lewistown montana we're gonna sell you this right who get ten dollar like who give ten dollar hibble like who give fifteen dollar hibble now? Twenty five dollar hibble like a twenty dollar bill now. Twenty five dollar hibble like a thirty dollar bill now. And just goes, I mean, just goes off. And and to be honest, everyone else in the class is like, this is the best auction I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Looking back, like when we hear it, it's like. It's so cringy that you just. So, I, I still want to crawl under the table when I hear it. But what's funny is there were other like real auctioneers in the room, instructors and the people who owned it. And I bet they were all just like, who does this guy think he is coming in here doing the worst auctioneering we've ever heard? But I mean, I will say there was some real intimidation factor in that room. You really asserted yourself <laughs> there. kind of just like, bow to bow to your sensei still remember that still remember you go me and jackson of course i'm just like his little sidekick so sitting next to each other and i just see you go up when i heard that southern accent thinking what is going what? on what's what happening are you doing? but how proud were you oh were you so proud were you so proud yes. were you so like, proud because you were young enough still where you still kind of had the awe you weren't like you hey were an, hey you're an listen, idiot i still have that awe <laughs> still got the i awe. still got the awe <laughs> oh man oh man and i don't even know i don't even know where it came from i don't even know where it came from it was that just was from awesome. it was just from having working for lyle for a few weeks that that, that summer and i'm like okay uh. but you were in another story kind of at the very front end of this deal jackson was gung ho he was all about i am gonna be i was, yeah, I was. i'm gonna be the man of i was focused of auction college because i remember another thing that same day we had to elect class president and i don't know was there ever a doubt after i laid down that no there was because we go out and you have to be nominated no one knows anyone <laughs> yeah no one no one knows yeah, anyone knows and you have other. to nominate someone and the, How the do person you know? who is nominated has to stand up and then they take a vote or something and, and but was, you don't know i was like 13 i was 14 i don't know i was a young kid and I remember saying, okay, now we need someone. We're going to nominate a class president. And you, this is a very serious responsibility here at the Western College of Auctioneering. You're going to be in charge of making sure the groups are where they need to be, all this stuff. And I remember, like, people are, like, nominating each other. And it, I'm, like, looking around. I'm, like, this is pretty dumb. Like, who would want to do this? This is the stupidest. Why would you ever you want to be? And I was, like, looking around to my right. Jackson's sitting to my left. And I remember looking around, seeing people. And I'm, like, man, this is so dumb. And, like, turning to Jackson. And just seeing him just looking like stone face forward. And I'm like, and then <laughs> oh, I realized, no. wait a second. Oh, no. And then I was like, wait, Jay, do you want me to nominate you? And Jackson just like stoic. And I'm like, Jackson, do you want me to you're nominate? Like, and just like, like, blink. Then he blink like looks at me. you want me to nominate you? Gives me like a small nod. And then I'm like, I nominate my brother, <laughs> Jackson Allen of Lewistown, Montana, to bear our banner. <laughs> But I just it's so good. I still remember thinking this is the dumbest thing ever in the big Oh wait, no. You're like, I mean I love it. Jackson! This guy I nominate Jackson <laughs> Stone. And I I <laughs> sad to say I don't think you won class present. I think I can't remember. I think Letitia Fry Did she edged you out. Yeah, she's because she's a woman. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. It's because she was an attractive woman. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> but uh oh. but I will say you did win uh by the end of uh, auction school they gave out some some awards they give out these accolades at the end <laughs> these accolades that were printed on like you know 1997 microsoft word word art yeah remember the old powerpoint presentations from like junior high like 2000 to 2004 ish you know yeah it was it was those graphics yeah they gave you the abc award which mm -hmm. stood for attitude bid calling and conduct Jackson still got that sucker framed up over at the house. Best attitude, best bid caller, best conduct. That's who they give it to. Is that right? Well, that's the award. I don't know. Oh, man. That's what they lead you to believe. And then they put it in this really nice, like, actual legit, like, maple wood frame. <laughs> and I still have it. It hangs above my bed. That's true. Jackson's a uh -huh. decorated college graduate. Mm -hmm. High accolades. You know, you know what else I remember? Mm-hmm 
for me that really stuck out to me because probably what stuck out to me was a lot different than what stuck out to you because I was just so young. But I remember uh, everyone there. Jackson had just come off his church mission and was just very structured and disciplined and frugal. Very frugal. Very frugal. I, I still am still frugal. Still is pretty dang frugal. Very frugal, but... But it, everyone... Now, hold on. Let me explain a little bit about the day-to-day. Yeah. So they go, understand yeah, go ahead and do that. why people were driven to do what they did at the end of the day. So you roll in and... Uh, you know, they get you going. Basically, your daily routine for the next two weeks is they bring in all these auctioneer instructors that are these, you know, very experienced, long-time auctioneers, and they get you up and they put you in a just this giant circle. You just stand there in a circle in the room for most of the day. Uh, it's either one big circle or you break off into like four small groups, and they teach you how to count. And so when you count, it's you're either counting by ones. Um, two and a halfs, fives, or tens, or hundreds, right? And that's basically all the numbers that you're going to count. And so you sit there in a circle, and they get you going on the rhythm where you're like, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, or four. Or give, give them the Western College of Auctioneering scale. A 10, 10, 20, 20, 30, 30. And you get like all in this robot chant where you're just all, hum, 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 hum. But their whole idea is to pound this into your head so hard that it becomes automatic. The whole point of auctioneering is you're conducting the sale without thinking about you. The numbers are the last thing you, you want to be thinking about. You need to be thinking about how do I promote this item? Who's looking like they might be interested in bidding? Who out there in the crowd do I need to coax in? Yeah, how do you get generate excitement, get mm-hmm. some bids going? They want yeah. the numbers to become uh, just e- involuntary reflex. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to be where it's not even thinking. It just happens. <laughs> so, But they achieve this, and it does work, but they achieve it by just hours and hours and hours of 10, 10, 20, 20, 30, 30, 40, 40, 2 and a half, 5, 7 and a half, 10, yep. 12 and a half, and just bang, 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 bang. So, and you do it from 8 in the morning until you, know, you get a lunch break and you're done like at 6 or 7 with mm-hmm. class. So it's like long days, and it's just two week course, and you're just there the whole time, and so you don't really get free time, you don't really get social time, other than at the end of the day. And now I'll let you jump back in. Yeah. So what Jackson's done a really good job of of painting a picture of is that you just have these scales just hammered in your head. Yeah. You know, for like n- nine or ten hours straight of just hammering these scales. They, yeah. These num they call them number scales, all the different increments. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Everyone at the end of the day wants to go blow off a little steam, just go get something decent to eat. And at lunch, too, also, they'd like to go to just somewhere. Just, just get out of the hotel. Get out of the war bonnet just, hotel. Uh, <laughs> just get out of the war bonnet in. Just go anywhere. Just, okay, let's regroup. And uh, oftentimes it was Texas Roadhouse, which I'd never been. I'd always driven by in Billings and thought, you know, just looked like a paradise. It's kind of new back then. Yeah. Oh, wait. And uh, had a bunch of guys from Canada. Those Canadians were high rollers down there. Crazy. They came ready to. They were all from Alberta. Yeah, them Al- Alberta boys came down and were ready to drop some dollars yep. there. And uh, so they would go out every night, every to, night, every single weeks. night to you know Texas Roadhouse or somewhere else cool, and at lunch, also to somewhere cool. <laughs> and me being the young guy, just kind of first time out, you know, eighth between eighth grade freshman year, yeah. and first time out with my brother and just looking and seeing, you know. Jay, you think maybe we could tag along? Oh, t- oh, Ty Hill invited us, said might like us to come along. And Jackson just with this disciplined frugal said, no, we've got tortillas and refried beans in our little fridge in our room. We're going to go there and we're going to hit scales. So we would eat tortillas. We would eat continental breakfast. We would eat tortillas and beans for lunch. Great value brand. Great value Tortilla. brand tortillas. Great value beans too. And great value cheese. I mean, maybe 20 cents for our lunch. And then we would, the cheap, for dinner, the cheapest white bread you could find bologna, craft cheese, the singles, Miracle Whip for two weeks straight. And we would hit scales after just getting this burned in your brain for 10 hours straight. I'm like 13 or 14 years old. I just want to go do something. And Jackson just, you know think we nope. could go tag along no we're hitting scales let's go baby <laughs> and we did and we did and Dude, we were the best we took it seriously Dude. which is good you know you do gotta go take it seriously but holy smokes 
Remember it got where the Canadians were like hung over in the morning oh, and they yeah. were like getting yeah. late for yeah. class and, and they they yeah. just were not getting it done. No, the later the day or the later the deal went on, you know, by the second week, you know, they, no one was showing up except for me and Jackson were just ready. Just had a glass of ice water, just oh, primed and ready yeah. to roll boom, sharp boom. at 8 a.m. every day. Just yep. itching to go eat some Let's go. <laughs> some Let's bean go. burrows for lunch and some bologna oh. sandwiches for dinner. In fact, remember that little girlfriend you had, that, that little high school gal that was in there? She, I think she ended up getting kicked out. Remember? Didn't she get kicked I out? D- I don't think she was high school, though. It was the second week. It was the very end. I do she remember. She, was, I think she, was, she wasn't. She was. I think she anyway, was. I do remember, but she did get like, kicked she got, out. She was enticed by the Canadians, and she went out, <laughs> and they just partied her out. <laughs> Love how we're just laying everything on <laughs> yeah. the Canadians. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, they know it. Them crazy Canucks. <laughs> They uh, anyway, she ended up like no showing for half the day. Remember, and they're like they were so mad because they knew that she's just holed up in a room, just yeah. hung over as a dog. And she was a minor. Yeah, she's a yeah. minor. So the Canadians took her out as a minor, got her drunk, and she's missed <laughs> like a day of school. And I think there were probably some other people with the. I think there was like two or three Canadian guys and two or three American <laughs> guys. I don't I don't think it's yeah. just the Canadians. Yeah, I'm going to lay it on the Canadians. I think this is a little bull hauler. Uh, <laughs> a little embellishment. A yeah. little bull hauler bias coming through. So anyway, so we get through the we get through the two weeks, you know. Um, do good. We did good. We did oh, real Oh, man, good. learning the tongue twisters. Yeah. Do you remember some of them? Oh, yeah. That's for me now because I don't auctioneer much. Yeah. I do you some. You do a few little things, mm-hmm. don't you? Yeah, little things, and it's always a Especially in the lawyering, lawyering community, there's oh. a lot of benefits and stuff. You know, uh-huh. so anyone hears you're an auctioneer, they're excited. But that's probably the best thing for me. Still, is just party just tricks, laying down tongue <laughs> just twisters. Laying down tongue twisters and, oh yeah, there's some. <coughs> we had remember Betty Botter. Oh yeah, Betty Botter bought some butter, but she said the butter bitter. If I put it in my batter, it'll make my batter bitter. So she bought a bit of better butter, put it in her bitter, better meter, bitter, better better. So she's better Betty Botter bought a bit of better butter. Beautiful. That's the old classic. <laughs> that's, yeah, it's like everyone somewhere is like, wait, I've heard that somewhere. Yeah. I thought the toughest for me was the old Theopolis thistle. This was the worst. I don't even, this was like next level tongue twister yeah. for everyone. It was the worst. And, yeah. and most people could never get it down. Yeah. Like they went the two weeks, couldn't get this down. What is it? Just like So, so slow. Through. It's, yeah. this is, yeah. It's Theop- hard to see, yeah. Theopolis thistle, the famous thistle sifter. While sifting a sieve full of unsifted thistles, thrust 3,000 thistles through the thick of his thumb. Dude, it's killer. Which is brutal. It's all that. Do you remember when I got stuck with the, what was the deal? I had to res- do it in front of the whole. Oh, yeah. Okay. So so uh, the way the school goes, you, you do all the work and you have a written test to get out that you have to pass in order to achieve, um, the, you know, to get your diploma. And then they also do an oral test yeah, where that's what it was. Yeah. you sell the rake. That's when you sell the rake. Don't you resell the rake and you do. Yeah, like they have you twisters. resell the rake. And then the, the instructor, the president of the, the college would tell you, I want you to do. He would basically give you what to do. He'd say, I want you to do the do, do tens to 100 and back. So you'd go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, you know. Uh, or I want you to do two and a halves. And then they'd, they'd tell you one tongue twister. They'd be like, do uh, red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather, red. Le-. And, and there was those three things. And then they would grade you on that as well. So we get through. We're doing great. Everyone's happy. It's auction school is almost over. Ah, things are great. Oh, it's fun. And, uh. Weston gets up there, and he's really come a long ways. You know, you really blossomed in those two weeks. I was good, man. You did. We we were, yeah, you were good. Youngest guy ever through the school. At the one time. of the best. At, at the, time. the time. Disclaimer. I, yeah, disclaimer. <laughs> so Weston gets up there, and they're like, do, you know, do the, sell the rake, and then, you know, do, uh, do two and a halves up to 50 and back down, and then uh, we're waiting on the tongue twister. And Theopolis Thistle is, I mean, notorious. Yeah. It's like the giant slayer. Yeah, no one. No, no matter one how good it. you are, it was just like, if they tell you it, you pretty much know that you're just not going to pass that part. So Weston gets up there, and you have to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Weston. You know, is very soft-spoken. Uh, Hi, I'm Weston Allen, you know, from Lewistown. And, you know, it's last day, and blah, blah, and we're going. And Jerry Ellis, the, <laughs> the president, old Jerry, goes, Weston, I want you to do Theopolis Thistle. Just a, a soft gasp through the room <laughs> everyone's just like what why would you make him do the apple some thistle? old lady in the in the back he's just a child <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure someone <laughs> if 
but I laid it down. I think I can still get a little Theopolis. Let's hear it. Theopolis thistle, the famous thistle sifter, while sifting a civil of unsuffered thistles, has 3,000 thistles through the thick of his thumb. <laughs> it's just like, it's just, it just takes me there, Jim. It's there, baby. <laughs> and he gets done, and it's like, it's like a like a game winning field goal. The stadium just erupts. People <sighs> lifted me up on their shoulders, like turning tables over, throwing their papers. In Jackson the air. almost gave me his ABC award. He almost, almost gave assigned it to him. that to yeah. me and said, "No, he deserves this it. Is the guy, this is his." Give it to him. Oh. Not quite. <laughs> Man. Oh, so that was. Uh, we've got a few other tales from auction school. We'll have to share with you another time, just to throw in. But um, that got us through and. Uh, Basically, you come out of auction school and you're you're just you've got a basis. You know that you know what you're supposed to do and how to do it. Now it's just up to you to practice like crazy. And uh, you remember the, the beginning of the first day when they're like, most of you guys are not going to succeed. Yeah. Just yeah. know that right now, like like one out of twenty of you are ever going to actually get to go do an auction. Yeah, day one, you're like, oh, that's a day. 14 things. Yeah. You say that day one. Easy, Jerry. Or never. <laughs> just leave that out of your <laughs> speech. But uh, anyway. yeah, he's like, he's like, hey, these are non-refundable, right? Yeah, <laughs> one out of twenty <laughs> will make it. <laughs> and we're like, hey, we got we got Uncle Lyle at home. It don't matter. We're gonna go sell cattle next week, yeah. right? So then we go home and you start selling, and it, you guys, it is the most, the probably honestly, of all the the public things I've done, I think auctioneering for the first time selling cattle across the block was the most terrifying thing that I've ever done in my life. And it's not that it's a big crowd or anything. It's just such, you know, that it's such a serious, like you are taking care of business for these ranchers. Their livelihood. It's their livelihood. And, and also the people buying them are, are pretty hardcore, tough, hardcore they're, customers. They're, they're, they're not, not, cattle buyers aren't overly friendly. They're very stoic and, and unforgiving. And yeah, they're not, if you don't know yeah. cattle and you don't know your stuff, mm-hmm. they're, they will railroad you into the ground. Yeah. They will take advantage of every opportunity they can find to 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 just <clears throat> weasel their way through and out of anything. I mean, they're they're good. They're doing their job, but they're not there to work with the auctioneer. You're kind of working against each other. Like you're trying to get all the money you can for this animal. Mm-hmm. They're trying to get it as cheap as they can. So you become like natural enemies, you know? Yeah. And then going up there and they know that you know nothing. Like they know, they're like, oh, yeah, this guy just got out of school. He doesn't know anything. And so you're just kind of at the mercy. Lyle, of course, would always yeah, sit yeah. up there with us just to make sure like, uh, 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 uh. yeah, he's not going to let anything he's fly. Not, yeah, yeah, no, because these are, you know, this is business. So so we did that, but we practiced uh, practiced really hard and did, uh, did did some good stuff. I'll tell you on that note, too, when you're saying that, you know, through law school is intense. It's the Socratic method. So when you're learning class, you you do these case studies, you read all these cases. So you learn about this concept, but the way you learn it is you read six cases where this concept is applied by a court Mm. and you have the decision and everything. And then you get to class and then, you know, the professor says, okay, you know, we're studying about, you know, I don't know, just any, any concept. Right. And, um, you know, assignments of contracts or whatever. And he'll say, okay, let's see Weston Allen. Then you have to stand up, oh. and he'll recite the case and say, "Okay, give me the facts of this case." And you have to recite the fact, or, you know, oh, condense the facts, and uh-huh. he, and he just grills you. And it's like you know the notorious thing from law school that is you know, makes you want to puke. But compared to selling cattle, it still was like mm, wasn't as bad as selling cattle. <laughs> and then in practice, when you know I'd been involved in litigation, had to do some courtroom stuff, same thing. Pretty pretty brutal and pretty yeah, gut wrenching. Like, yeah. Still, still, I think I'd rather do that than sell cattle. At the time, those initial times selling cattle. Oh man, that was nerve wracking. And then, yeah, it. So it was a long road to get there, but uh, really took it seriously. Still do. I still practice all the time. If if you followed the YouTube channel, you've heard me do some auctioneering on there and stuff. And I don't sell cattle full time anymore, um, but I still auctioneer every day. Every day, at some point where I'm driving, I'm practicing just to stay sharp on it because. It's another one of those tools now where you're like, well, there's always some auctions. Out yep, there. and this will come up in a later podcast, but Jackson really uses it to stay awake on the road. <laughs> he does not care who is team trucking with him that's trying to sleep in the sleeper right behind him. He will auctioneer as loud oh, as he can, baby. and he will pound his steering wheel. It's all about the rhythm, Jim. Hey, but he gets uh, We'll talk about that later. You know, yeah, we'll talk about that later, but... 
Okay, so uh, moving forward here, now that we're kind of immersed into the auctioneering world, we're starting to learn our way around and realizing that this is like uh, there's it's like this there's this culture uh, of of peers of auctioneers culture and community and, yeah, yeah totally and as part of this community they actually have um, auctioneering competitions and early on another auctioneer uh, from here that I was working with was really involved in competitions and, and was like, they're very important. They really help you grow, which was, was true. They put you in an uncomfortable situation. You know, basically you, you go and they do these competitions during a real auction. So you, you go and you sell, um, you sell cattle in a live auction setting during our actual sale. And there's judges sprinkled out in the crowd and they judge, you know, your poise and how well you handle the sale and how well you sound and just overall how you do as an auctioneer. And so there was this, there's this uh, competition called the World Livestock Auctioneering Championships. And it's open to any auctioneers, you know, all across the world. Typically draws auctioneers from the U.S. and Canada um, because other auctions around the world are conducted a little differently. But it's open to any of them. <clears throat> but to get into this, to, to, to get into this, basically you, you enter and they have different qualifying, uh, they call them quarterfinals, and you have to fill out an application and enter one of four of these different you know, quarterfinals that they had. And so you would, then they were all over the US and Canada, so you'd have to travel to this place, compete, and if you made the top, I think it was the top eight, then you would get to go to the, you know, the finale, which they had months later, you know, at a city, um, around their big livestock convention that they would hold. This was the Livestock Marketing Association that sponsored all this. So I was, of course, wanting to become, you know, in the vein of great value tortillas and great value beans being frugal and hardcore, I was like, okay, I'm going to do these competitions if they're going to make me better. And I will admit I was kind of getting caught up in the uh, livestock auctioneers really have this thing where, they get, and this, it's just true. And if you're a livestock auctioneer, you're just, you can just laugh because they get into this thing where they, they kind of think that they're a little more important than they probably really are. <laughs> a lot of people, you know, that happens in a lot of industries, but they, it really is like, yeah, I'm, you know, I, I auctioneer, I auctioneer cattle. And you're like, huh? Most people are like, hmm, whatever that is. <laughs> but in the, in the peer group, you know, we kind of, hmm, and in the Western circles. So, Anyway, uh, well, and you took it seriously because this was what your this was kind of I mean your, this was one my your main, main thing right yeah. this was this was as much I was making and this was providing as much of a living uh, if not actually it was providing more of a living than the trucking was for a long time oh yeah because I wasn't just selling cattle I would contract auctioneer for other people and and help other auction companies and just kind of a hired gun type of deal but anyway um, hired gun you say. <laughs> what do you think of that? <laughs> see that's that exactly that's the term like I'm a hired gun auctioneer and people are like what. No, that's like a, a mercenary. You're not a hired gun. <laughs> like, well, I sling, I sling them numbers pretty fast and hard. I'm lethal. <laughs> no, you're not. You're just weird. <laughs> Auctioneers are weird. We're weird. Oh, uh, so anyhow, I uh, first year, I'm like, all right, I go and I do this competition. It was actually in Mile City, Montana. I go there. I'm like, this, you know, this is this is tough, but whatever. I don't. I compete. I learned some things, but I don't qualify. Not even close. Um, second year I go, I uh, happen to be down here in Billings, which is weird. We're getting these. There was only four in the country in Canada, and they happen to both be within a few hours of us. So I go to Billings and do that one. Don't qualify, but I did. You know, I'm learning things and getting better. Meeting people. Yeah, meeting people, networking, all that good stuff. Year three, it's up in Pinoca, Alberta, Canada. Some of you, you Canadian now, I'm like, oh, I want to see some of these crazy Canadians from auction school up there again. And be just hanging out at the roadhouse. So anyhow, uh, we go up to Pinoca and, and by now this is year three for me. And I'm like, I am getting pretty good. I had, I had previously won the Montana state, you know, rookie of the year award, and, you know, but those are things again, that mean nothing to anybody, but people in, I think so. I'm like. Kind of feeling like, you know, I'm pretty good. And I, I mean, I was good. I was getting good. Oh, yeah, no you know, doubt. In, in seriousness, like I had a good rhythm and was very clear. And oh, yeah. Then was kind of a good little young and up-and-comer guy. So go up to uh, up to Canada. And by this time, um, 
our our friend here, Kyle, that had won the he had actually won the world championship the the year before, like the world livestock yeah, auction. He won the whole deal, and so as part of his responsibilities as the champion, is he hosts all of these competitions. So he's like, well, I can just give you a ride to Pinoca because I'm. I don't know if this is the best part to interject. I have a <laughs> funny story. Just because you mentioned Kyle winning. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's do it. I remember when Kyle won, it was kind of cra- He was, at the time, again, mm-hmm. I think he was like the youngest person to ever win it, maybe. Yeah, at the time. Yeah. yeah and, and, you know, anyway, he's and he, we were really close. We were in a band with him. Yeah, he was our band leader. Yeah. Yeah. And so he, we were very close. And I remember after he won, I knew because I was talking to his his brother, uh, Justin, he was telling me, yeah, Kyle's crazy. Everyone's blowing up his phone. Everyone's calling him, and he's trying to drive back here in this. Oh, you get like, a in pickup. his prize truck. Yeah, they, you win a pickup for the year. They yeah. give you a pickup to use. For so the he's year. driving back in his prize truck and fielding all these calls. And I thought, oh, this can be hilarious. I'm gonna call him. I'm gonna prank call him, prank right? him, because he's getting all these random calls from people. Yeah, c- yeah. Congratulations. So I, you know, what was it? Star six seven. Oh yeah, where you yeah. could like mask your number <laughs> yeah. back in the day. <laughs> so I star six seven him and give him the old prank call, which is one of my special. Again, I'm like. I'm young, right? Yeah. So, I, and I think you were, the, we might have been like feeding cows or something when we did this. We were. Yeah. yeah. And so I call him and, and I I said like, I was like, uh, hey, Kyle. Yeah, no, good to good to talk to you. This is William Hempshire up here in Maine. <laughs> in Maine. You no said idea. I remember. Yeah. have no idea how people from Maine talk or if any of this is accurate. But you, th- that's you what I did. You were doing your best, yeah. I said, oh, man, saw you there on the LMAs thing. You did a great job, man. Just really, really hats off to your friend. You really knocked it out of the park. And he's oh wow, William, thank you, thank you so much. I mean, he's Kyle is the consummate the peak professional. Of professional, yeah, yeah, right. So, <laughs> William, you know, it's been a dream of mine since I was a young man. Well, you know, he starts kind of thinking. I said, well, Kyle, see, the reason I'm calling you is I'm I'm thinking about putting on a little bit of a a school here. We got a lot of lobster auctions up here in the Northeast, and <laughs> yeah. thinking about putting together a little school. Thought it might be good to get it off the ground if we could have you come up here and do a little instructing, talk about what you do. And and Kyle's like, you know, William, let me get back to you. I'm going to check my calendar. That sounds like something I'd like to look at. <laughs> and then I'm about to say, just kidding, dude. It's me. I'm Weston. Yeah. I'm like his little brother. Well, we're you know? thinking, we're thinking, he's so busy. Like, there's no way he's going to take time. No. He's got all these rodeos to do. Now he's got these auctions oh, yeah. to take right. care of. He announces rodeos. No and way it. in the world is he going to say, actually, like, <laughs> consider it. So, but then, yes, yeah, so then he says, you know what, William? You, let's get together. We'll talk dates. We'll look at our and I. Yeah, and, so, you, and you asked him but no, this, this is, question. You said, "How how do you feel?" How yeah, that's it, what it was. Yes. So, well, how do you how feel, Kyle? Feel how does it feel to win? And this is right before I'm going to say, "Just kidding, dude. It's yeah, me. You're Hope you're driving safe. To, Miss you, know, man. Yeah. Congrats." Yeah. And then he's like, "William, it's been a dream of mine since I was five years old. My father's an auctioneer. <laughs> I've just been. I cannot believe. I am humbled. Yeah, I, you know, just just, really and all this stuff going. where I'm like." <laughs> I don't want to be like, oh, Kyle, 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 stop, dude. This is me. No, like he's going it. on. He's like semi-emotional, like emotional, and you're like, whoa, yeah, no, whoa, yeah, whoa, yeah, yeah, stop, stop, stop. And so I have to freaking just stay in character and ride this. It was too, you just pushed it too so far, and you had to ride I did, it, man. I had to, because it, I couldn't, after Kyle kind of opens himself up, I didn't want to so, be like, oh, You're so vulnerable on yeah, the phone. Yeah, right. Man. I didn't want to be like, Kyle, it's me, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> So I just say, oh, well, that's great, Kyle. Yeah, anyway, we'll get a hold of you later on. Yeah. Drive safe again. Congratulations. <laughs> And then I got off, and I remember looking at you and just like, that was horrible. And I'm just like, oh. Yeah, but like, it wasn't funny. Like, like there was no, yeah, there was no punchline. We, yeah, there was no, it was just like this, <laughs> it was just like mean thing. We're like, oh, that was just like a mean thing. Yeah, I can't remember if I we mean, ever even told Kyle. I don't if know you ever if we did. To this podcast, Kyle, I don't know if you remember Sorry. that. That was me, <laughs> the main auction school that never came through. Oh. <laughs> He's probably still looking for that number in his <laughs> yeah. contacts to network up there. Oh, uh, so you were going to ride with Kyle yeah, up to Pinoca because like, he had just won he, this yeah, thing. Yeah. He's, he's hosting the next round. In the so prize truck. You're, you're yeah, going to jump, in, like, the prize jump in the prize truck. I'm going to drive up there. Got another real famous auctioneer who's going to fly in and compete up there. It was another one of those Charlie Cummins from Kansas or uh, Nebraska, and he was real great. He he ended up winning, you know, whatever down the yeah, line. He's a but beast. Just, so I'm, I'm young. I'm like, oh, ride with you, ride with Charlie Cummins? Yeah, 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 uh-huh. And, of course, because he's the champion – He's going to rub shoulders with these other guys. I'm all in. So we go up there, and I sell my heart out at Pinocchio. I'm just up there just ripping. In the zone. Just in the zone, laying it down. But I had this one little mistake that I made. And basically, to simply explain it, what it was, was I was, say I was at uh, 35, asking 36. 35, I need 36 here, now, 36 here, now. 
I I went when someone bid thirty six. I said thirty like thirty four. I went backwards for some reason, just for a second. Instead of going thirty six, thirty seven, I went, you know, thirty five, thirty six, thirty four, thirty four, and then it just just that quick. And I went, oh, thirty seven, down eight, nine, now, and I just, I mean, I covered it. it was smooth. I recovered nice. Yeah, just laid it on. Had a good run. Felt felt great. Yeah, and. When they announce the they take they take eight, and they announced it, and I got number nine, missed it by that much, and I was so mad, I was, I was so mad. I was mostly mad because after Kyle won, they put they put your champion clip online, yeah. like on their website, like here's our you know here's all the champions for the last hundred years, yeah. And in Kyle's clip, he actually made a flub in his championship run, where he goofed up and got just lost for a second. It's just same thing, same split just second, just second. very brief. Where you're like, what? Oh. Oh, he got—he was lost, but then he found his way. Yeah, and he still went on and won it. So even though I had screwed up, I was like, "Well, there's still a chance." So you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> but but different judges, different day, different time. They didn't like it. So ninth, ninth. I'm like, I came all the way up to stinking Pinoca. Pinoca's a great place, but I don't mean stinking Pinoca. I mean that I drove like a hundred hours up there into the frozen Northland. You gotta take it easy on Canada, man. You gotta no, be I careful like Canada. Here. My best friend, my, my best friend lives in uh, Raymond, yeah. Alberta. That's right. Uh, so anyway, um, I don't, I don't make it in. So are you, after this, are you just like, man, I'm a little dejected. Cause I'm like, I really fought and everyone's like, dude, don't worry. It's all about how you recover. You know, I pushed hard. I did. It didn't matter. And I remember Dan Skeels, who's a Canadian legend. Oh, Dan, yeah. he's like that guy that sounds like a robot machine gun. Yep. <laughs> yep. If you, you, you guys just go Google Dan Skeel, Dan Skeels auctioneering. And <laughs> this is the guy. He pulls me aside, and he's like, "Man, keep your head up, and all this." And I'm just like, "I'm like, well, I have to wait a whole other year, you know." <laughs> I'm like, "I can't do it." <laughs> so anyway, that's that. I get over it. Whatever. Go home. Go back to ranch and doing our trucking stuff. Doing these crazy trucking adventures, and um, I'm feeding cows in the springtime. In like, it's like April, late April probably, and I get a phone call from a number that's like middle of. I'm like, "What is this? Like Kansas City, Missouri?" And I pick up, I'm like, hello? And they're like, hey, is this Jackson Allen? You know, I'm like, yeah, yeah. They're like, well, um, we're calling to let you know that the number uh, eight qualifier from Pinoca last fall has a family something and is not going to make it in June to the world championships. And because you were number nine, you automatically, everyone bumps up a place and you're now in the world championships. <laughs> Freaking storybook. <laughs> so, so I'm like, what? They're like, as long, I mean, as, as, assuming you want to, and I'm like, I want to. I'm like, of course I want to. Like, yes. So they're having them out in. Uh, it was in South Carolina. South Carolina. Yep. Um. So I'm like, I'm all in. Great. So I, of course, I call Kyle, and I'm like, Kyle, I'm in. You know, and he's like, oh, great, great. Yeah, he's so happy. So in the meantime, Kyle, our band leader, had talked the yeah. organization into hiring our band to play for the convention. So we're all getting flown out there. I'm going to be out there no matter what. Even if I wasn't perform uh, auctioneering, I was going to be out there playing in the band with you. With me? I'm going to with South Carolina, Stone baby. going to South Carolina. So, you know, the day comes, we're all, here we go. I uh, I completely shaved my whole head, minus my head hair, meaning that I shaved my face. Why would you say it like that? Because Why would you say I shaved my <laughs> whole head, minus my head hair? Why wouldn't you say I shaved my beard? Because there is, there's there's no <laughs> worse way to say that. <laughs> Why would you say it like that? Jim, I'm just trying to make people think a little bit. You guys think <laughs> I can't even breathe. I can't breathe. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Okay. So, so, basically, you guys, I'm clean shaved. You even shaved off my soul patch that I always had back in the day. I'm totally clean shaved because the judges are like, if you're not clean shaved, you know, we're going to just send you home because that's how they are in the cowboy world. Like, you got a whisker, you might as well just go crawl in a hole because yeah. we hate you forever you gotta play the game so <laughs> can i point something out that's kind of funny yes, too yes. go ahead this is like at the same time while you were flying out while you're doing these competitions and you're selling around your hired gun your words not mine <laughs> as you're doing all this stuff and flying out to the world livestock auctioneering championship yeah. and all this stuff 
this is the same time that like me and you are like spray painting a flatbed trailer yeah. and neon green. neon green and we're you know going up to the Missouri River breaks on that herd dispersion the crazy wild cattle yeah. that we had to this is all the same window it's, it's just funny because like on one side it's like wow Jackson is doing this stuff that is like the top of the top on the livestock auctioneering but also like He's also doing this stuff that's like the bottom of the, the bottom. bottom. You couldn't get any more bottom You couldn't of the barrel. start at a lower. <laughs> yeah, with your two. Fi- yeah, so like when you blew up your truck, Jake, on yeah. the side of the road, and you got your yeah. two $500 semis, yeah. all that stuff. You know, that's like the bottom of the bottom of trucking. But this is happening while you're kind of at the, you know, on the steep incline of the really? rise of the auction. Of the auction. Just funny for, Just for the listeners yeah. to understand like, yeah, you know, <laughs> while you're doing this, you're also like this. Yeah, just, pretty pretty tough, pretty bad a auctioneer. Oh. So yeah, so we're flying out to South Carolina. So we get out there and it's great. And we, you know, it's a great time. Uh, our flight got massively delayed on the way out, and like bad. Like we had storms and cancellations, and it was just like this fiasco. Yeah, it took forever. We finally get out there at like one, two in the morning, and we go to rent our car. And of course, I had reserved like the four cylinder, two door. Yeah, you, whatever. You cheapest. reserve the great value tortillas uh, and beans version of a rental car. Yes. Again, yeah, yes. the bologna sandwich on white bread and Miracle Whip yes. version of a rental car. Like, of I don't course. care. Like, I don't care. Yeah. Just cheap. I'm trying to save money. Well, we get there and they're like, hey, unfortunately, sir, all of our cheap cars are gone. All that we have left is a Cadillac CTS and like a BMW something little sports thing. And, of course, I had me and you and Haley, my wife, and then uh, Freddie J. my oldest boy, Freddie, yeah, was just a little baby at yeah. the time. So he's he's there, and I'm like, well, uh, are you going to honor my $12 a day rental charge for my Ford Escort that I rented? <laughs> and, and they're like, yeah, no, same price, just whatever car you want. So we go, and we end up getting this just to- like... At the, it was brand, brand new. new. Like nothing like we've ever seen in Montana. We're just like, look at that. That caddy? Yeah. That thing, thing was ripped. So, oh, man. Oh, I loved oh, it. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So we go and we get to the hotel and we realize we're like, <laughs> we're starving. We're starving. So Haley, you know, I'm trying to help Haley get, you know, settle in with this, with our little infant, basically, and toddler. And uh, I'm like, Weston, why don't you go out, take the caddy? Of course, he's like, yeah, caddy, let's go. Heck yeah. I said, why don't you go take the caddy out and go get us something to eat? And it seemed like two minutes later, Weston arrives back. And again, Jackson is a, a you know great value beans and tortillas guy. Mm-hmm. Weston that's, is not. That's not how I roll no. when, it, when it came to getting some food. And I, I had my own money. So I was like, okay, I'm not, I don't have to worry about trying to make sure I keep you know a, a meal for four under $3.50. So, I'm not spending Jackson's money. I'm spending my own money. So you guys, in a, I don't even know where you went, some local burger thing that you found Only place that was open. Yeah. And Weston walks in with... Back to the hotel room. Back to the hotel room with three supersized 60-ounce fountain drinks uh, and like th- literally three double cheeseburgers loaded bacon everything and then you got the fries like the loaded bacon cheese bacon fries. cheese fries this is at two in the morning and we're like <laughs> oh it just comes in just lays it down he's like all right you guys i got us so much food we have to be up like at 6 30 to start the convention the next morning and we're just like okay okay and i think we were all so tired and so down and like whatever we're just like, we just we yeah. just feasted and, oh and you got shakes too you got milkshakes <laughs> for so so three giant fountain drinks three giant milk and they're all just the largest like whatever's the biggest like go empty the garbage can and fill it full of soda whatever i just want the most of anything you can come with luke would be so disgusted right now if he was here <laughs> oh so we get that we get that again thing. Should have been a point where you sat me down and said, "Hey, buddy. Hey, hey, bud. We didn't talk about this. <laughs> we didn't talk about this. We didn't talk about some of your proclivities. So many signs, here. man. Yeah. So many signs. We just let them go. Signs of what? <laughs> hey, you said it the other day, not me. So anyway, uh, we go and we rock in, and we're getting uh, we're getting actually close on time, but we uh, we go out and you know we do the competition. But before the competition, we had a little time at the convention center. Uh, where you know, like two days where you're meeting the other contestants and all these people in the industry, and it's just all the people in the industry that are pretty whew, high because like they flew out to South Carolina from wherever they are at in the country to come to this livestock, this livestock marketing association convention. 
And I'm realizing, you know, again, I'm kind of out of my depth as far as my social stature because I'm just kind of a little boy, so yeah. to speak. But I start talking to these other contestants, and they're uh, they're talking about their sponsors. Now, you had to be sponsored. I, I knew I had to be sponsored to get into the competition. Now, what I thought was a sponsor was you have to have basically a signature to verify that you actually are a livestock auctioneer that is gainfully employed <laughs> at a functioning member livestock market of this association. So to get in, of course, I went to my uncle and aunt, and they signed their names, and I sent it in, and that's that. Well, So they're my sponsors. So, of course, I flew out. I rented the Ford Escort, whatever, all this stuff, staying at the Econo Lodge, Motel 6, whatever, trying to save all my coins, right? I start talking to these other auctioneers, and they're like, how, how was your sponsorship? And I'm like, my what? You're like, yeah, no, I, you're like, yeah, I'm an auctioneer. The signature was fine. Yeah. No issues. No issues. I'm I'm legit. <laughs> they signed it in blue ink. Like what? They're like, no, no, like, did you get hooked up? And I'm like, I don't I don't understand what you're what do you mean? They're like, dude, like the last sale that I sold, man, like my boss, the guy I work for, you know, that sponsored me, like came up, gives me a thousand dollars cash, and he's like, dude, we're so proud of you going out and doing this. Here you go. And I'm like, oh, yeah, no, huh. No, I don't. Yeah, my man. The other one's like, wow, well, yeah, well, they, they got my plane tickets, flew us out, put us up. Yeah, it's been on. To take my whole, my, my wife, my kids are down swimming at the hotel. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. Hm. Oh, okay. Huh. So I'm starting to realize, and then I put it together. I'm like, their auctioneer last year was the world champion. I'm the little peasant boy. Of course they're not going to give me anything. <laughs> yeah, they're not going like, to drop anything on they're you. They're not going to waste money on you. We got the current world champion in our stable. Like, <laughs> so anyway, the competition day comes and I went out and I just sold out of my mind. Just like, just blazed it. First year, I'm, I'm a rookie there in the competition and just laid it down. Yeah. And, and I, of course, I didn't expect anything more than, than to, to just perform in the preliminaries there that day. There's, so there's 32, 33 in the prelims and then they take top 10, I guess. And they, they go on and do the finals with the top 10, and then they announce the winners. So I just go and sell. And I'm just happy that I did good. I didn't get scared. Just did the yeah. best. Like, I did the best that I could. That's all you can ask, right? So they get us all in the room after that, and they announced the top 10. And I was like the second name that they announced. And I'm like, I didn't even get any sponsor money. I'm like, you, are you sure you're talking about me? <laughs> and anyway, so they get me in the top 10, and uh, I went in top 10, and again sold real good maybe probably not quite as good as my first round because i felt like i had a little more weight on my shoulders because yeah. you're like ooh, and uh, a little more pressure but anyway did the best i could that night at the awards banquets they uh they announced the top three winners of course and i i didn't uh, i didn't make top three but i did finish eighth is where i ended up landing finished eighth in the world back in 2011 but uh you know that was broken down you had a bid calling where you're judged strictly on your yeah, chance this was the trick and they also had an interview portion right and i remember that you were number one yeah. on the bid calling I portion i couldn't believe that so they send you this card back i could man your <laughs> chant was so good it is so good yeah thanks man um so they send you this card and it gives you your scores like six weeks later you get it in the mail and you're like and they they tell you where you were you know going out of that round of 33 they give you your play score. And I, I had won. I was number one out of 33. These guys, all these crazy wizards in the world. And I was number one. But the, the trick is that, um, oh, and then I went into the finals. And I think, uh, I can't that's remember right. where I was at. I think it was like five or something. I was, yeah. Anyway, but the, the, the catch was, that's one portion of the competition. The other portion, think of this like a Miss America pageant. The other portion is they do an interview. It is a pageant. It really, really is. Yeah. It is, yeah. The other portion, they do an interview the day before where you stand up in front of the whole convention crowd and in a dark room with a spotlight on you or whatever. And Swanky dinner. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they're like, they ask you three questions to do with the industry. And you, you answer them and you get judged on how you answer the questions. And I have like no prim and polish and nothing. So they're like, you know, what's important about it? And you're like, well, I'm a, you know, when I'm hauling cattle out there. And they're like, what? <laughs> when you're hot. You're a trucker? Oh, you know, like, I, I said everything wrong. I think I got out of 33, I think my interview, I was like 28th out of 33. And that's like 
thirty percent of your score or something yeah, like that. So, so when they took my interview score and added it to my auctioneering, it really boom 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 it tumbled down, me down yeah. the list a long ways. But uh, ended up being a, a good experience. So the next year, I'm like jacked. I'm ready to roll. I'm like, dude, I got momentum. Yeah, I'm the I, I'm here. Let's go. So when I go to sign up for the prelims, uh, you have to have it postmarked by a certain date. And I signed all the papers, got my signatures, put it on the desk uh, at the livestock auction with the outbound mail, all the checks and stuff from the sale that day that we're supposed to get stamped and sent. Um, that's it. And I went home and I'm ready to roll. Well, I get a call like 10 days later from the LMA, from the association. They're like, hey, uh, we got your entry, but you're not, you're not going to be able to compete. And I'm like, what do you mean? <clears throat> they said, you missed the deadline. You didn't send it in by the date you were supposed to. And I'm like, uh, that's not, <laughs> nope. And so I got in a big fight with them about it because I'm like, basically in a nutshell, what had happened was they had an automated ma uh, stamping, whatever, where you put it in the machine and it stamps the postage at the place of business. So you don't actually have to like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. anyway. So it got stamped at the livestock auction the proper date but the mail never got picked up or taken or whatever so the the postage paid was on that was paid for in time but by the time it got to the post office and processed through and postmarked it was the day after the deadline so they're like you're not in and i'm like you know what i'm done with you guys i was like i will never come back i was so mad i was so like offended so because mad, i was yeah. like you guys i'm like i'm like i I can't, I'm like this story of came from just total nothing and fought in and did so great. And like, this is not a me being lazy thing. Like I did it yeah. properly. As far as I knew, it was some postal error and they had just no tolerance. They just wouldn't even listen. Just nothing. So I was like, I'm never coming back. And I never did. Never went back again. And people still wonder, what happened to that guy? <laughs> that kid from Montana? Where'd he go? But, uh, oh, man. Had a good auctioneering run, yeah. man. Yeah. So auctioneering is interesting. Basically, to, to wrap this up, we're kind of we're out of time. But uh, it's, a, it's a unique world. Um, I've always been a bit, you know, I talked about how I've kind of an outside, like at school, I'm always fighting authority and stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, like or like with LMA, if they didn't yeah, accept same your thing, thing. Like, I'm never going to talk to you. Like, I'm done. Like, I'm done. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm on fire <laughs> and never again. <laughs> Anyway, uh, livestock, it was just an interesting time of my life because I, I like to just do things how I want to do them. Um, for example, I, I've had my beard for like 11, 12 years now. Um, I, like, I just like that. I like to have my hair long. I like to have my hair short, whatever I want to do. I just want to do what I want to do. And whatever I'm doing for a living, I want to be the best at that. So I'd go in and be, you know, do a great job auctioneering. Very, very good. But yet, I would never get the the best opportunities given to me because I, ref, you know, I just I wouldn't shave. Like you'd be so much better. We'd just like you that much more if you could shave your head and cut your hair. And it's just like no, like that. Yeah. No, like it's a cool thing. Like I'm different and it's kind of my own feel or whatever. But it was in the auctioneering cowboy world. It's not it's not a good thing. Like they don't want you to stick out. They don't want you to, to be different at all. In fact, um, the last year that I auctioneered as a, as a living, uh, as an occupation, um, I got hired to go down to Billings to work for kind of the biggest, well it is, it's like the, the biggest auction livestock auction group in Montana. And they were like, we really want you to come down. Um, we need some help, but under one condition. And I'm like, let me guess, you want me to shave and cut my hair? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, I'm not doing it. And from the outside looking in, you're like, oh, kid, these guys are pretty big time. Like, you should, you should definitely cut your hair and shave. And I, but I was like, no, I don't, I, no, no, I'm just, no, this is me. I'm, I'm not doing it. I can go do a great job for you and look this way. And anyway, we ended up compromising and settling on, I would tuck my hair all up <laughs> under my cowboy hat. So I'd put it all up, you know, and then pull my hat down so it looked like I had like clean cut. Hey, and then I would um, I would pin my beard up like this so it was all tucked in and looked like I had a short <laughs> camp. And then after the sale, I would unleash it, you know, and come back down. But uh, anyway, more or less, uh, the moral of that would be, um, you know, sure stick to your guns, but don't be offended if 
there's consequences for you. Like like in my case, I was like, I'm not going to shave. I'm not going to. I'm not going to cut my hair. I'm going to be me, and I'm going to do a good job for you. But don't don't be wounded forever and ever if they say, okay, well then that's just not going to work for us. Okay, that's fine. Go on and do your thing, and just just be happy and roll on. And uh, that's more or less kind of where I ended up. Yeah, auctioneering helped you a ton with trucking too. Getting into it, I would say that's the other thing. So to bring this full circle and close up. Um, that I mean, this is it. So working at the livestock auction, you meet all the cattle buyers. You un, you you under you learn where their cattle are going. You learn when they're buying what kind of cattle. Uh, you know what their trucking needs are. You know who they use for trucking. You know who's needing truckers, who isn't needing truckers. It gave me this inside peek, and it was just a springboard for everything. So from there, I get to know these guys, and they started looking for trucks. And last thing too, then just to tie it in a boat too. Is yeah. When you and Luke talk about mentorship and things a lot. And you've said that your advice and young truckers in, in Idaho, I think, right, took you up on it maybe of yeah. going and sitting in the sale barn. The reason you give that advice is because you know every, you know exactly what happens in the sale barn behind the scenes mm-hmm. like you wouldn't believe yeah. because you've been there from auction school to the World Livestock Auctioneering Championships. You understand it. And so when you have a, when it comes from you, from Jackson Allen telling someone, hey, if you want to get into livestock trucking, this is really what you ought to do believe that because jackson's been on the back side of that and he knows everything going on yeah. behind behind the scenes there this is a heck of a journey jim good stuff yeah all right you guys uh you got any questions inquiries comments whatnot you can email steady at the wheel podcast at gmail.com check them out on instagram at the same uh, at the same handle uh till next time you guys be good <laughs>